This is the first video on applications of generative AI, which is a course at Washington University that we're going to start in the fall of 2024. This course will cover primarily large language models, so the ChatGPT type of activity where you're sending text to the large language model as a prompt and getting results back. But we're going to see how to do that very programmatically and incorporate RAG and lots of other technologies in there with that to create agents and chatbots and a variety of things like that. We're also going to deal with text to image. So stable diffusion, Dolly, those kinds of things. This course is divided into 13 modules. We're dealing with module one, part one right now. So I'm giving you the course overview. I'll talk about how students at Washington University will interact with this course, but all of the material is available online. The YouTube videos are available, the assignments are available, and all the code is available in GitHub. So you can certainly follow through the entire course through the just as an internet user. This is a hybrid course, so we're going to meet four times during the semester at the university. The first session is uh, 827, 2024, at 6 o'clock p.m. I don't have the building yet or the room number, but that will be coming. We'll get into a lot of different things. So large language models, chat and memory, how you let these large language models have a memory so that you can continue a conversation with them over time. We'll deal with data extraction, how you can send data to the large language model to be processed, and then how it returns information to you that you need to then parse data out of. We'll see how you can do Q&A over large documents, which would be things like um, you give it a PDF and you want to ask it questions about it, and that may be 500 plus pages. You can use a technology called RAG to basically load that, that document and allow the large language model to iterate over and find information in it and answer questions without having to be fine-tuned on that document. We'll see how to create agents, which are semi-autonomous creatures, whatever you want to call it, programs that can act uh, for you. Streamlit is a web technology that allows us to create interactive websites that make use of ChatGPT type technology, the large language models that we're dealing with. So there'll be a Kaggle assignment. And Kaggle, if you haven't dealt with that before, is they have competitions that data scientists and machine learning practitioners compete to build the best models. You won't compete in an actual Kaggle competition, but they have something called Kaggle and Community where instructors like me can put data sets out there. And I always create a data set to, uh, to challenge the students and to let them really see how which, which student or teams in the class can come up with the best model. And we'll do text to image, like I said. We'll deal with fine tuning, which allows you to actually change the neural network to, to tune the weights to what you're trying to actually have it do. And we'll apply that both to image and to text. We'll go deeper into prompt engineering and learn how to really deal with making the prompts the best possible that they can be. Uh, we'll do prompt-based development, which talks about how to use these large language models now as your assistant. And all of the assignments, I assume that you're going to be using large language models to help you to complete the assignments. It's not cheating to use ChatGPT to help you with your homework in this course. In fact, you're supposed to. Then we'll finally end it off with speech processing. So generative AI, ChatGPT, which you see here, really, really took the world by storm. You can simply type something into this prompt and it is going to interact with you. So it can be a text prompt. So here I told it, write a Python program that uses Langchain. That's one of the technologies we'll learn about this semester to tell me a funny joke about Python snakes and Python, the programming language, and send it to the OpenAI API. That's the very one that we're going to use this semester. I'm not asking it for a joke on, on this. I'm saying write a program that does this programmatically and give me that joke. And here you can see it literally generates the code. 
can uh, you can see how this can certainly help you on your homework. And this is absolutely what I encourage you to do. And we'll learn early on how to get ChatGPT type technology or ChatGPT itself, if you so desire, to assist you through the semester. That's a text to text. You gave it text, you got text back. There's also text to image. Here I said, create a square image of a student studying generative AI, and there he is. This also gets into prompt engineering. I didn't say create a realistic one, so it's creating this whimsical kind of overlaid, whatever you want to even call this, like the human mind sort of thing, maybe neurons there. So I should have said maybe a realistic one. This also shows some of the bias that is in these models. I said studying. Most of the training documents that I had of people studying, they were probably using books. I don't know. I mean, when's the last time you've studied for an exam with a book open like that? Uh, and what's he doing? He's writing in the book. Uh, so hope he owns that book. So nonetheless, this is... That is one of the biases. The other bias that you hear a lot about with with generative AI is usually when you tell it to render somebody, if you don't say what hair color, what um, what diversity group you're necessarily looking for, it's going to probably give you a white male just because you didn't give that information. So it's going to fill in the blanks for you and it'll use whatever bias it has in its underlying training set to fill in those blanks. Let's look at module one. As we go into there, you'll see that I have all of the data represented, all of the course material as Jupyter Notebooks. This is a Jupyter Notebook, an IPYNB file. And each of these will have five parts to them. So five videos. Each video is going to be about 10 minutes long is what I'm shooting for. And it'll have a notebook. And this is the notebook. It'll give you the necessary information, and it talks about kind of what I was showing you there, uh, and goes through the the origins, some background on it. It also talks about, for this one, and definitely read through this material for the first course session. We won't use these a lot, but we will use underlying neural network frameworks. The two big ones right now are TensorFlow Keras and PyTorch. We're going to focus very much completely just on PyTorch. I do have a Py, an entire course on PyTorch, if you're interested in that. I'll put a link to it in the description, also taught at WashU. When we do need to use a low-level neural network library in this course, we will use PyTorch, and most of the large language models that we will use are based on that. You won't see it, but it's, it's at the low level. You'll need several tokens and keys for this course to complete it, you'll need a homework submission API key. I will email that through Canvas to each of you before the semester starts. If you're just following this from the internet, you'll just need to check really your assignment on, on your own. I, I can't grade thousands of, of these. You'll need a Hugging Face key that lets you download pre-trained models from Hugging Face. We'll see that as we get into it. And then we'll set this up in a couple of videos. You'll need an open AI API key that is connected to your credit card and lets you issue commands to open AI, which we're gonna learn about. Through, we're gonna do that through Langchain. Uh, I am saying to budget about $100 for this course in terms of open AI API keys. That's probably high. I don't think we're going to go anywhere near that. So I would say probably buy the credits in like $25 increments. If any student ends up spending or is getting close to spending more on that, let me know because we need to, we need to plan this out accordingly. You'll see code in these notebooks. And if you want to run the code, up at the very top, there's a badge called Open in Colab. And Colab is a product of Google. It's free, but there are subscriptions. I am a subscriber, so that's why you see the Colab Pro Plus up there. You do not need to subscribe to, to that. But once you're in here, you can do runtime and change runtime type. This will look different on the free version, but you can select various GPUs. 
I'm use I'm you I really don't even need a GPU. I'll switch it back over to CPU, save it. And for this one, we can just go down to the bottom and we can run this code that you see here. Run anyway, and it executes this. And this just checks to see that you've got the right versions of things installed and that you're able to actually execute Python code. And there, there we have it. Some of this has been deprecated, so I will fix that before the course starts. It looks like has MPS. Yeah, to detecting if you're running on a Mac. Most of what we're going to run in this course is going to be ran through APIs on big compute in the cloud, so you don't really need a local GPU on your system. We will talk about small large language models, which are the ones that you, you can actually run on your local computer system. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe so that as I add additional videos to this to this course, you will see those and have access to them. I'm really just starting to put this course together, so let me know if you have any suggestions on content for it. Thank you very much.